let's consider some cost of test related issues. The electronics industry is always under pressure to keep manufacturing costs down. Reasons for this requirement include economic inflation, intense competition, shorter product life cycles, and smaller profit margins. Some people may still think that one way of lowering manufacturing cost is reducing the amount of testing based on the idea that test does not add any value to the end product. That is a big misconception, however. Consider a product that gets shipped to the customer with a defect that could have been caught by a more thorough test. How expensive is it to satisfy warranty claims, to ship the product back and forth, and the hidden cost of losing one's reputation for good quality with customers? In the end, you're paying much more than it would co have cost to implement an efficient test strategy. So, test actually does add value to a product by catching defects that would otherwise escape and res would result in a frustrating or perha perhaps even dangerous experience for the end user. Test also helps us control the manufacturing process by identifying trends. For example, the placement of wrong components could indicate that the wrong component reel has been loaded into the placement machine, or bad solder joints could indicate problems with the screen printing process or with the reflow soldering equipment. And tests can add value by reducing the number of field returns and warranty issues we have to deal with because of bad products slipping through, the end, through to the end users. When we are trying to identify the best test strat strategy for a particular product we are building, we need to consider a number of things, such as the available time for test as dictated by the tech time of the production line, the available test access on the unit under test, and the type of circuitry we want to test. Any test methodology requires some form of design for test whether it is the placement of test points in the case of a bed of nails test or flying probe testers or the availability of a scan chain or boundary scan testing. So when considering the cost of test, we need to take into account the cost of design for testability, which would include design time and material costs, for example. We also need to consider the test development time and resources required the cost of the test equipment, any maintenance and storage required for the test equipment, the actual test time, any cost created by warranty claims, and so on. When looking at boundary scan, the test equipment is typically very inexpensive and low maintenance compared to, uh, to other automated test equipment. The test time is also usually very short. But since boundary scan is focusing on the test of digital circuitry, there is still the need to test the analog and mixed signal parts of the UT and the actual at-speed at function of the UT by some other means. The goal is to find the most efficient test strategy, one that provides the best overall test coverage achievable at, at a cost that makes economic sense for the product we are building. With that, we have come to the end of today's webinar. We have looked at different test methodologies and identified their strengths and weaknesses. We have introduced the boundary scan technology as defined in IEEE 1149.1 and talked about the practical use of this test technology. And finally, we touched on cost issues related to test. We hope that this webinar has provoked some th thought about your own test strategy and perhaps you can see application for boundary scan in your own products. If you have any technology or product specific questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us at Gopal. Contact information is, is provided at the end of this slide set. On the next couple of slides, I have listed Refer some references for those of you who are interested in more information about boundary scan and test related issues. There are a number of books available on boundary scan testing in general and the economics of test. In addition to books and information on many websites, 
There are also numerous conference papers and other material available from industry groups such as IEEE and SMTA. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for listening to our webinar today.